Hi, I'm Jack Infinity 203, and I'm here to talk to you guys about one of the most iconic origin stories in the history of comic book movies, Spider-Man 2002. First off, let's start off with the positives. I thought this is an amazing origin story. It's faithful. It tackles him from when he gets his powers all the way to him becoming Spider-Man and what it means to be the character, and I just love so much about it. It's fun, it's entertaining, it's engaging, and it is absolutely fun to watch from start to finish. Spoilers ahead. You are warned. This movie has been out since 2002. I am going to talk spoilers from big to small. I am not going to hold back. So if you haven't seen this movie, you might wanna get out of this video right now because this is your only warning. The acting here is terrific. I loved Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker, and he did a great job as the iconic wall crawler. And Kirsten Dunst is really good as Mary Jane, the love interest of Peter Parker in this movie. And I love the dynamic between Peter and MJ, but also Peter and Norman and Peter and Harry. They're real, they work really well together in this movie. And I thought every single dynamic in this movie from every character is really good and it's very believable. James Franco is really good as his as his friend, Harry Osborne. And I love seeing them in the opening scene before Peter gets bitten by the radioactive spider. And I just love seeing him go from, even in the scene where Spider-Man fights Flash Thompson, them in the hallway, I love seeing Harry's face as he's like, that was amazing. And I just love seeing him and their conversations throughout this movie, which also continues, not just here, but in, even in Spider-Man's 2 and 3. So that's also really good too. J.K. Simmons is absolutely perfect as J. Jonah Jameson. If you think perfect casting does not exist, J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson immediately proves you wrong. He looks like J. Jonah Jameson. He acts like J. Jonah Jameson. And he just talks like him. It's absolutely marvelous. Like he... It's literally something that's so perfect, nobody can replace him. And I loved any bits with J. Jonah Jameson in this movie, even if he's not like too huge of a focus in this movie like he is in other ones. So there's that. But Willem Dafoe is amazing as Green Goblin, one of the best Spider-Man villains and comic book villains ever put to screen. Willem Dafoe is just marvelous as both Norman Osborn and the Green Goblin. He's menacing, he makes the right facial expressions, and you can easily differentiate whether he is Norman Osborn or whether he's acting like he's Green Goblin. It's marvelous, it's perfect casting. Willem Dafoe is just amazing in just about anything that he's in. And I love him so much in this movie. He also gave us some iconic meme moments that are absolute cinema at its finest. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. 40,000 years of evolution and we barely even tapped the vastness of human potential. But you can't do this to me. I started this company. You know how much I sacrificed? You and I are not so different. Itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the goblin and took the spider out. Another huge thing that I adore about this movie is that it tells the iconic origin story of Spider-Man. Because this is the first, this was like the first big budget Spider-Man film of all at the time. So what I loved was how they went for the traditional origin story of who he was before and his relationship with Aunt May and Uncle Ben. And I just loved seeing all of these components and see him become Spider-Man. It's so well done, very well directed by Sam Raimi. And it's so, there's so many heartfelt moments when it comes to Peter and MJ. And it's just so beautiful, especially one of the most iconic kiss scenes in the history of cinema. And that is the kiss in the rain with Peter and MJ when she kisses Spider-Man in the alley. It's just beautiful and even the score in the background by Danny Elfman it's top tier comic book soundtrack it's just amazing it's probably besides like maybe the Horner score for the first Amazing Spider-Man even though 
every Spider-Man movie score has been really good, but Danny Elfman's Spider-Man score for that and Spider-Man 2, just perfect. It's just amazing. It all lands so well as it should. This movie is amazing when it comes to comic book accuracy. It nailed all the tones, it nailed the characters, it nailed his relationship with Uncle Ben. When Peter finds out that Uncle Ben gets shot, it is so heartbreaking. You feel for Peter and the fact that he just lost a loved one and how it's his it's part of his responsibility that something like that which should never happen to anyone else ever again and it's so well directed and you can see that toby really sold that moment as you see him break down when you see his uncle shot as you see him lay there dying on the ground right in front of his eyes it's beautiful it's heartfelt it's emotional and there's so much of that in this movie and it's just terrific I know I'm praising this movie too much, but it's just amazing how good this movie is and how faithful it is to Spider-Man. It nailed all the important aspects of Spider-Man. It got the suit, it got his relationship with Uncle Ben and Aunt May, it got the consequences and how his life isn't as great as he hoped it would be and how becoming Spider-Man made his life better and how he wanted to get the girl in the form of MJ, and how he's trying to both do this and protect those he loved, and it got him trying to be a photographer at the Daily Bugle, and how he tried to be a wrestler and make money, which didn't work, which eventually leads to him accidentally letting the killer get away, which led him to killing Uncle Ben. All of it lands, and it's done so well. Most comic book origin stories aren't on the same level as this movie because this movie is like one of the peak when it comes to comic book origin stories for sure maybe the movie when it comes to the visuals might look dated even though i do not mind the visuals whatsoever i do think that they do improve when you get to spider-man 2 and 3 but this movie lands all the emotional beats all the acting, the directing from Sam Raimi, from the score, all the way to the action. And the movie can be kind of cheesy, not going to lie. But it sold because this movie is not just an action movie or a comic book movie, but it's also a drama. A lot of great Spider-Man stories are dramas because not only do they deal with him being Spider-Man and trying to do the right thing and save people and stop the villain, but it also comes down to his internal conflict is humanity and morals and how with great power comes great responsibility. It's something that most of the these movies nailed the best out of any Spider-Man movies, whether it's this one, the Amazing Spider-Man movies, or even the Holland movies. These movies nailed them the best. All of it was done as faithful to the comics. And this is why Spider-Man 2002 easily sits as one of the greatest comic book movies in the history of cinema. Another thing that I thought worked really well at the end of this movie was the final fight between Spider-Man and Green Goblin. Like, you see Spider-Man bleeding, you see he just took a bomb to the face, you see him getting beaten, bruised, and he's so beaten to a pulp. It was like, you almost see Spider-Man losing. Eventually, he gets the upper hand, he takes down Green Goblin, and... Just when it looks like Green Goblin might be turning back to Norman, he tries to kill Spider-Man with his glider. Spider-Man dodges it, and then it kills Norman. It was a shocking way to wrap up the movie, but it also kicks off Harry's arc about his hatred for Spider-Man that will continue in Spider-Mans 2 and 3. That, I thought, worked really well when it comes to that movie, how that movie ends sets up a plot point that continues over the course of the trilogy, and I thought it does it really well. And then another thing that I loved about this movie is the ending. Seeing it end where he's at the he's at Norman Osborn's funeral, and then he goes, and then he tells the talks to Harry to calm him down, and he's like, Spider-Man's gonna pay for what he did. And that's where you see Harry start to hate Spider-Man. And then eventually, Peter is by Ben's grave, and he just stands there after all that just happened throughout the movie. And then MJ comes in and is like wanting to comfort him. 
and and then it's just like he can't bring it to her to tell her that he is spider-man and all that so eventually they stay as friends didn't seem like he could really be with her just yet and then he walks away he delivers his iconic monologue about who am i that's like this is my burden this is my curse who am i i'm spider-man it cuts to that amazing final swing in the movie it's probably the best final swing out of any spider-man movie to date and it's only the first movie it's just amazing it's so well choreographed it looks beautiful visually and seeing the iconic spider-man theme play as he swings across new york city from that point to where he gets the flagpole all the way till the end it's amazing it's phenomenal it is an amazing way to wrap up this movie about spider-man if i were to say i had an issue with this movie it would be kind of far-fetched but it's kind of i would think that i think spider-man 2 just topped this movie while spider-man 1 did so many things right spider-man 2 did say the same amount of things right but even more and they were the pros of spider-man 2 were just a lot higher than the pros of this movie so i think just compared to spider-man 2 it's not as strong even though i still love this movie I'm going to give Spider-Man an A. And it's a must-see for everybody, whether you're a fan of Spider-Man or comic book movies or not. Yeah, please do yourself a favor and go watch this movie. its I don't know what streaming service it's on yet, but if not, go ahead and buy or rent the movie on DVD or anywhere like iTunes or anything. You need to watch this movie. It's... One of those iconic comic book movies that everybody has got to watch at some point in their lives. Also, I will be doing Spider-Man movie reviews from here all the way to Far From Home in honor of Spider-Man No Way Home coming out in mid-December. So I am really looking forward to that. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to review each of the other Spider-Man movies. And I hope you stick around for them. So, those are my thoughts on Spider-Man. What did you think about this movie? Let me know down below in the comments section, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this movie. Don't forget to give this video a like, comment down below for on your thoughts on the movie, and hopefully you will subscribe for more.